Do a little dance for us, Pete. The crowd. I'm just messing with you. Hey, this is Ryan from Underground Reptiles. Welcome to 20 Minutes Underground, our weekly reptile special for enthusiasts like us and Josh. This week we look at box turtles and a brony, two animals that are very dear to us. I'm watching him, he's trying to, he tries to touch me. Animals that are very dear to us at Underground Reptiles because of the uh, time that we spend with them. I remember the first time I saw a Nebroni was about seven or eight years ago at the Expo. It was in a Nebroni Graminia at the, uh, the National Reptile Breeders Expo and it was the, when it was in Orlando. It was actually, actually seven or ten years ago. And I just thought it was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. I, I can imagine an animal could be so cool. It's like being a kid all over again. We've talked about that before when you're a kid and you see an animal and it's just like you're so amazed by it. You have to have it. Mom, but I have to have it. That's how I was when I saw that at Brony. I was like, oh my goodness, I have to get them. So I'm really blessed to be breeding them again. And box turtles, I never thought you can produce those things in big quantities. I've never seen them. And the fact that we produced about 50 or 60 from last year, I think even more than that was a dream come true for me. And, and, um, and it's so easy to take care of. You'll see on the video. Thanks for watching, guys. God bless you. Enjoy the show. introduce you guys to one of my favorite projects and I probably say that about every project but it's true but we're gonna show we're gonna show them the box turtle pens come on come on let's go Cammy what's your favorite turtle this one that's your favorite one what's his name uh, probably let's make something up good bubbles bubbles what an awesome turtle Hi Bubbles. So here we are. This is turtle pen one. We probably got 20 turtles in this one. My daughter Arlie, she always says after we've had this, we've had this pen here for about, about three years now, two years. And she, she loves it. She thinks everybody should have a turtle pen in their backyard. Why? First of all, they're really easy to take care of. Um, they're vegetarian. They're, they're not vegetarians like some people assume. They actually are more carnivore than they are vegetable eaters. Stand up a second. Let's lift this up. Let me show you here. What we did was we put an assortment of box turtles in here so that they would hybridize, thus making it easy to sell them. Because some turtles are protected in certain areas and you can't ship them across state lines. And uh, Florida allows you to have one Florida box turtle in your house per every person that lives in your house. And since I have 12 people that live in my house, that allows me to have about a dozen box turtles. Now, this being winter, we're taking this. We're going to show you a few different ones. This is a ornate box turtle from Texas. Those over there, I think, are Florida box turtles. Hard to tell the difference sometimes, especially when they're not all colored up. Now, if we were taking this video and it was spring, you guys would see the colors are so magnificent, especially the males really color up. Now, if you take a look at that food right there, that's a winter food that we feed them that keeps them fat and healthy and still strong. Those are chicken hearts. We go get those by the store. Did you see, you see the picture of that one buried? A lot of them just bury themselves in the bottom there. And they'll sit there for days at a time, come out to drink, maybe eat something once in a while. Show them Kiki. Kiki has a box turtle too. That's the same one I had. What do you like them box turtles? What do you like about them best? You like that one better? You want to go get him? Gotta hear that one. You go get him. Now they'll eat a myriad of anything. Like you throw a, a mango, you guys see some of the other videos where I throw papaya, mango, they really like sweet fruits. Watch your head, sweetheart. 
but basically three or four times a week I'm throwing a big bowl of those chicken hearts in there or sometimes I'll throw chicken gizzards or, or, or chicken livers in there. They really need a lot of high protein, high calcium. Now come over here. This is the other side. That's an Eastern box toe. It's a real pretty one. You can now look at this one here. This one's got a big, beautiful yellow head. Again, not super colored up. Look at that one trying to make a, a, a little hole for himself in the ground so he can crawl in a little cave or a tunnel. Mommy Isn't that is big? There's a, there's a big, sorry baby. There's a big Florida. Look at this Florida here. Ah, big Florida male. You can tell how old he is by how big he is and how many of the rings run down each scoot. How beat up he chewed up he is. That's probably from battles with other males or animal trying to, to get to him. You can tell he's a male too and he's been busy breeding because of the concave shell there. And if you could tell his long tail. Now what they do is when they're nervous, now these aren't nervous. My kids are out here all the time playing with them. We hand feed them. They go in their shell and they literally close the trap. Close the trap door like a, a box. That's where they get the name box throw. And I'm telling you, you couldn't get that thing and you could play hockey with that and they wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to get to him. There's a beautiful yellow-headed one. Now you see the water bowl, look to, you, to your left. That's a water bowl and that's a very important part of them. Watch out, baby girl, watch your head. Great. That's, that, that, the Great. yellow one, is, that's the one that bit in me. That's the one that bit you? No, I'm gonna spank his hiney, good. So that big water bowl is really important because um, box turtles, especially the ones that are the eastern box turtles and stuff, what are you going to do with that rock? Yeah, throw it in that water. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. They're semi-aquatic for sometimes the first four or five years of, of their lives. As a matter of fact, last year when we were salamander hunting up north, uh, we, were, we were digging through a, a, a we were literally drudging a, a a little what we would call in Florida canal bank but what they call up there a creek bed we were digging through the creek bed and buried right in the mud was a, a box turtle about a three and a half four year old box turtle it's pretty pretty cool very interesting I never expected that so to have a nice big water feature or water area for them and now we'll come out here some days in Florida it doesn't get real cold but it'll be 45 40 degrees and there'll be box turtles literally under the water so they will hibernate or, or get really slowed down underneath the water. I don't know if it's, it's called hibernation, what they do, I, I probably is. Um, they're some of the funnest pets too, but now the, the only downside to them from a breeding perspective is you never know where they're gonna lay their eggs. So we'll, be, we'll find baby box turtles all year long, all around. We get a heavy rain, box turtles come up from under the ground. And, and we don't even know how many box turtles might have uh, been eaten Baby boxers might have been eaten by the adults when they come out. Who knows? Uh, but if you guys want to take a look at the other. Now this is the uh, this is the second pen we just put in, and you, you'll notice we sunk it down a little bit more. Where that one we kind of built up, this one we built down. Same principle, and we have um, I think we have about 12 or 15 box turtles in here, mostly eastern box. Can look at this one here. That's one of the really cool things about box turtles. If, if anybody ever breeds them regularly, captive, there's so many various, so much, there are more variables in these things than any, almost any other animal. And every one is so distinct and different. This is kind of, this is kind of ugly one. I mean, if there was such a thing as far as some of the colors go. Oh, look at this, we have breeding. Get up, get up. Get up a second, babes. You guys ready? Watch this. Now you notice the breeding that's going on, at least he's trying to breed. You can tell he's a male, look how red his eyes are. When the males breed, their eyes turn all dark red, like they're on fire. And look at his hand, how, how his, his left back hooks the bottom of the female's shell. Now she's closed up and he has to literally drag her. <laughs> we kind of interrupted him. That's called coitus interruptus. And she she shut she shut her trap on, him and he's trying to get away now. But uh, he has to drag his house with him. Now, if you'll notice, you have an eastern, 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 and that right there is a Florida. 
And then you got the tube. Grab that little baby over there so that people can see that baby. Right not, here? not the other one, babes. Um. The little one. The one that's buried itself. Cammy's digging up. I want to get that one. Okay, go get that one. He's still dragging her. She's not going to let him go. You ain't finished yet, boy. Okay, look out, look out now. Why did he dig himself? Okay, now you see what they have here is these, you see, they start out like this big, they hatch about that big, and then they're about double in size. So this one I say is about two and a half years old. Cammy's got one that's also about two, two and a half years old. They're just the cutest little boogers in the world. I mean, look at these things. Look at those big, beautiful brown eyes on that thing. Great pets. The kids can play with them. Box turtles are the jam. And they come in so many varieties. Out out Texas, they got them too. I think they have box turtles up, up north and all the way east is New York and even further out. Not real hip on box turtle distribution or anything like that. It's funny is uh, every once in a while, one of my dogs will grab a box turtle. And we'll find him running around the yard because he picked him up and decided he was going to make a play toy out of him. We just put him back there. They're steady. Oh, look at this one. Look at this one. This is a Florida box turtle. No, that's, yes. This is a Florida box turtle that we got the other day. Somebody brought it in the store. This is an old female. You can tell she's still real nervous. So look how she boxes up. Look at this thing here. Now, something was chewing on the shelf. Amazing that they have the ability to heal so much. Something, no, it wasn't us. It, was, it was, happened before we got it. Who knows, was it a bear or a, a wild dog? What, something was chewing on this thing, a raccoon, but it's completely healed. Bone is coming through. Look, look at this thing. You just can't, they're impregnable unless you really smash it somehow, but even then you see how they heal. Old female, and, and just looking at this thing, I'm telling you, this thing's gotta be 30, 40 years old easy. Amazing creatures. Now, we will have box turtles for sale. Oh, look at this one. Look at this one. Look how colorful this one is. Look at the variety. Look at that. Look at that. This one's all boxed up too. Look at even little babies in the box. They got to play with. Not supposed to play with them. Cammy just yelled at me. Same situation. We set the water up the same way. Baby box turtles are some of the coolest pets in the world because you can feed them turtle food and fish food and crickets and mealworms and strawberries. You could put them in a 10-gallon tank to start them off in deep substrate. They don't require so much heat, so you don't have to worry about great pets. Love them. Hopefully, they'll be really big in the, in the future in the pet industry. I know uh, at Underground Reptiles, we're looking to forge ahead going with them as, as one of our future big breeding projects. Bus. All right, now that you're done farting, let's go. Hey guys, this is Ryan B, and this is your cheap trick money-saving tip of the week. A lot of you guys know that at Underground Reptiles, we like setting up our display tanks in more of a naturalistic setting. It looks nicer, it displays the animal, and not a lot nicer. But if you're somebody like myself, who likes to save money, the other option is more the industrial setup. Here at Underground Reptiles, for some of our larger snakes, you can see we use paper. Okay, now you guys can also use paper. You can get like any type of uh, newsprint paper, blank newsprint. You can get it from different paper companies. Some people will use paper towels, although that'd be kind of wasteful in a cage that size. Or if you're like me and you want to be really cheap and stingy about it, what I'd recommend doing is get one of those liberal magazines like the New York Times or New Times, something stupid like that, you know, that nonsense. And you can just throw it in there and let your snake crap all over it. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, che cheap money-saving tip of the week, and stay tuned because there's going to be more. We do get a lot of comments, people asking us why we have so many religious references and Bible verses and stuff like that. Uh, the first reason I can tell you this is a lot of the guys that work here, myself included, are Christians. 
times we've come to a saving knowledge in the Lord Jesus Christ and I wish that all would do the same but if you don't then that's your business and we don't care but this is how we live our lives this is who we live our lives for certainly not meaning to offend anybody but if what I believe offends you to the point where you can't even look at it or hear it maybe there's something personal going on in your heart that you should check out and ask about our government the most blessed country in the world gives us the right to freedom of religion. And with that freedom of religion, we will be bold because we're not ashamed to call on the name of our Lord Jesus. So if you want to know more about the Lord Jesus, please ask and we'll gladly tell you. If you don't and you're not interested in the Bible verses, do something really extraordinary and ignore it. Till then, have fun. God bless you. Even you guys that don't believe in God. Because if you don't believe in God, know that he still believes in you. I want to show you guys one of my favorite projects. Now, I'm not really updated on all the nuances and locations, and there's a lot of great websites on these animals. These are abronia. I hope for the future to make these things a, a, a big part of underground reptiles as, as we expand our indoor breeding facilities and having uh, an actual room. Uh, I'd love to have just a thousand square foot room of breeding these things alone because I think these things can be very big in the, in the, in the industry, in the pet industry right now, they're just too expensive. But if you look here, this is abronia graminia. This is a female. And it, again, it's winter, so she's kind of not the best looking thing in the world that you're seeing now, but even now, it's just look how beautiful this little animal is. I just fed them so they're all fat and happy. Cool weather animal, you can keep them in the 60s and 70s and they thrive, even down into the 40s and the 50s, so it's a, it's a perfect animal for, for an inside house. This is her boyfriend. Her boyfriend's in there, each one of these has a pair of them in it. Look at that animal. Breeding male, Abronia graminia. I don't know if you could pick it up how the blue is almost a metallic. Look how during mating season his chin puffs up almost like a, a tegu gets those big cheeks. Just an amazing looking animal. Look at the, the white eye shadows. Amazing. This is why I think these animals are going to be some of the biggest projects in the future. That's, gr uh, that's a Bronia graminia. Look at here over here. This is a Bronia tineata. Also just a gorgeous animal. Look at that beautiful animal. Easy to take care of. They thrive in captivity. Only get about a foot long tops. 10, 12 inches full grown, even in the biggest ones. There's about, I think, 12 to 14 different species of Abronia. They're from uh, Central and I think there's some that occur in South America, I'm not sure they're strictly arboreal, so it's really cool. You can set up a really nice arboreal looking cage, fake branches and plants we put in there. Look at this one, look at the variety in these things too. Mm. This one has some bites on its tail, which might mean that it's been breeding, I don't know. But I like the prospect of that. Look at the darker, different type of pattern that one has. Isn't that absolutely sensational? Good friend of mine, John Oliver, who pr produces a good quantity of these things, all the different species and kinds of them. He uh, he sold me these last year. These are what's called the Bronia Martin Del Campi. I'm anxious to see what the adults look like, but I'm starting to see. I got these as babies. They're starting to mature. And the only problem you'll have is sometimes the males, as they get older, they'll start to battle and beat each other up, but they're generally not going to kill each other. And you can tell you got a male, a, a, a one missing a tail or a bite marks. So you just move them. That's really one of the really cool things. Look over here. I hope I can get off in one piece. What's really neat about them, unlike most lizards, when they shed, they shed like a snake. Ah, you can't get it off. I can't get it off. And it's all in one complete piece here. Look at that. 
They shed like a snake, although they're a lizard, in one complete piece. You can feed them a variety of insects, crickets, mealworms, waxworms, any of that stuff. They, they thrive on. And what's good about them is they display well. You can set up a really nice tank and, and, and most of the times in the day, they're sitting right on top of that branch just basking some ultraviolet light. You do want to put ultraviolet light on them though. Again, there's so many different species. There's about a dozen different species of, uh, of a brony out there and a myriad of colors and even within the same species and subspecies, they also are very variable as well. Uh, we suggest them highly. We look forward to breeding them in the future. And hey, listen, if you're one of those people out there, oh, man, this bear's winning. Oh, I have a brony. We're interested in purchasing all the brony that you guys can find for us. So if you're out there and you have a brony and you want to sell them, we're buying a brony right now because we want to set them up and breed them, introduce them to the pet trade. Um, the Graminias are, are going for probably six, seven hundred dollars each. The Tindiata are almost a thousand dollars each. The Martin Del Campi are, are in that same thousand dollar range each. But with captive producing and, and quantity producing, it'll, it'll bring the price down, make them more available to the public, and, uh, and everybody will be able to enjoy them. Thanks so much. Boss. Don't eat my lasagna. No. Oh, excuse me. I'm still feeling the effects of that turkey we just had. Anyways, it's your good friend Moody Booty here from Underground Reptiles. Getting ready to pick some winners for this week's comment contest winners on the YouTube. Hope you guys enjoy. And by the way, it's Moody Booty. My name's not Adi Body or Moody Bloody. So not some of you numbskulls out there that can't spell it right, get it right. Moody freaking booty. Anyways, we'll pick our three contest winners. And you guys will be winning, uh, let's see here, napkins, no. Pens, no, that won't work. Oh, I see here. Right here, this is going to be perfect. You guys will love this. A gecko cave. It's meant to look like the shack that we keep inbred Ned in out back. So you guys will love it. Enjoy your gecko cave. Here are my winners. This week we've got Don't Shoot Up. What are you, McGruff the Crime Dog here? Why didn't you just name yourself Don't Just Say No? I, I don't know. Anyway, Don't Shoot Up, which is good advice, I guess, writes that he had a red-faced western hog nose named Senor Spicy Balls. I don't get it. It's not a ball python. Why would you call it Senor Spicy Balls? Not to mention, you misspelled Senor. You forgot the little squiggly line that turns an N into another letter in the Spanish language, which doesn't make sense either. Maybe you can explain that to me, Senor Spicy Balls. Our next comment winner was Boa Man 5435 He or she writes to us that they had a Savannah Monitor named Lucifer, a black and white Tegu named Satan, Take it easy there, Beelzebub. And then, ironically enough, a red tegu named Tegi Wagi. It's good to see that you came over from the dark side for at least a brief moment to give your animal a name that is somewhat less scary or satanic in nature. May I recommend an animal in the future by the name of Prince of Darkness, perhaps? Ha <laughs> ha. Anyways. That was creepy. Moving on to a less scary figure. We've got hockey player 6437. He writes that he had a pet giraffe named Smalls. Don't judge me. We won't judge you. We've got an Austin here that we call giraffe. Ha <laughs> ha, you get it? You guys have seen him. You know what I'm talking about. Now some of you guys wonder why I'm so mean 
and I'm such a jerk, and why I make fun of people, and that's because I like to. And somebody wrote to me this week about, why don't I make fun of that guy Ryan B? Well, here's why, guys. Besides his devilish good looks, he talks like Kermit the Frog. I don't have to make fun of him. Every time you hear his voice, you should chuckle. Ha 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 ha, you get it? Uh, that was pretty good, too. Anyways, guys, it's your good friend, Moody Booty. Keep watching. Keep commenting. You'll win free crap. Maybe next week, we'll give away some of the moonshine that uh, our buddy in Brett Ned makes out back. I'm just kidding. DEA, please. Whatever, you guys. ATF. Don't come this way. He doesn't make any moonshine out back. No, Keep I, watching, guys. I don't have a bathtub steel back there. That's right. We keep him busy killing hogs. Keep watching. It's your good friend, Modi Bodie. Underground Reptiles. I'm number one. Underground Reptiles number two. Ha. See you later. Hey, thanks for watching 20 Minutes Underground. Please remember something. It's so important to us to get your comments. The more comments we get, the more we know that you guys are liking what we're doing. This is not an advertisement. This is not a TV show. We don't get paid to do this. It costs us money. We do it for one reason, one reason only, because it's fun. But we only have fun if you have fun. So send us your suggestions, not just your comments, but also your suggestions. Hey, I like this one. I don't like this one. I'd like to see this. I don't like to see that. We got to know what you guys want to see out there. We got to know what's fun for you, so it'll be fun for us. Question of the week. And you get some free crap, as we've told you before. What's your opinion on frozen thawed versus live food? Now that could be frozen fish, that could be frozen mice and rats, whatever. What is your opinion on feeding live versus feeding frozen thawed? We want the best answers and we want some from experience. If somebody says, hey, I was feeding live, but here's this what happened. We want to know because what we do is for you. And if we ain't doing it for you, ain't no sense in doing it. Thank you so much. God bless you. Us.